So we're being asked to prove this statement. This basically shows that the complex exponential function is not one to one, right? We're showing that e to the z1 is equal to e to the z2, if and only if z1 is equal to z2 plus 2k pi i, where k is an integer. Let's go ahead and prove this. In order to prove this, we're going to prove an intermediate result to make it a little bit easier. So the claim is that e to the z is equal to one, if and only if z is equal to 2k pi i, where k is an integer. So let's carefully go through this proof. So we'll start by supposing that e to the z is equal to one. So suppose that e to the z is equal to one. Then what we'll do is look at the modulus of z. And in this case here, z will be x plus i y. So now we'll look at the modulus. So then one is equal to the modulus of e to the z. Right, because 1 is e to the z, so the modulus of 1 is 1. And we can write z as x plus i y, so this is the modulus of e to the x plus i y. Then using properties of exponents, this is the modulus of e to the x, e to the i y. And then using properties of the modulus, this is the modulus of e to the x times the modulus of e to the i y. So 1 is equal to, well, the modulus of e to the x is simply e to the x. e to the x is a real valued function, and the modulus of a real number is just the absolute value. Here, the modulus of e to the y, well, let's first use Euler's identity. We can write e to the y is cosine y plus i sine y, and this is equal to e to the x. And to find the modulus of a complex number, you take the square root, and you square the real and imaginary parts. So we're going to square cosine and then add, and then we're going to square the sine function. And everyone knows from trig that cosine squared plus sine squared is one. So this is times one, and so this is equal to e to the x. So we've shown that one is equal to e to the x. So thus, e to the x is equal to one. So this means that x is equal to zero. That part should be pretty obvious. Um, if it's not, you can just use properties of logs. If e to the x is equal to one, that means x is equal to the natural log of one, which is equal to zero. So now let's take a look at e to the z again. So then, Let's see if we can discover something by looking at e to the z now that the fact that x is equal to zero using that fact. So e to the z is equal to e to the x plus i y. And we said x was zero, so this is e to the zero plus i y, so e to the i y. And again, using Euler's, this is cosine y plus i sine y. So e to the z is equal to cosine y plus i sine y. But by a hypothesis, e to the z is equal to one. So this is equal to one. Two complex numbers are equal when their real and imaginary parts are equal. So this means that cosine y is equal to one and the sine of y is equal to zero. And this is only gonna happen when y is equal to two k pi, where k is an integer. So finally, we can go ahead and write down z. So then z well, it was x plus i y. We said x was zero, so this is zero plus i times two k pi. So it's equal to two k pi i, where k is in z. So the first half of our lemma of our claim is done. Now to show the other part, this part should be pretty quick. We suppose that z is equal to two k pi i for some k in z. And we have to show that e to the z is equal to one. So let's try it. So then e to the z is simply e to the two k pi i. And that's equal to, well, we can use Euler's. This is cosine of two k pi plus i sine of two k pi. The cosine of two k pi is one. 
and the sine of 2k pi is 0. So we end up with 1. So we've shown that e to the z is equal to 1. So we've proven our lemma. We've proven, let me write down again what we've shown. So we showed the following. Let me use a different color. So we showed that e to the z is equal to 1 if and only if z is equal to 2k pi i where k is in the set of integers. So now let's rewrite our original claim since so much has happened since then. So the claim was that e to the z1 is equal to e to the z2 if and only if z1 is equal to z2 plus 2k pi i where k is an integer. So this should follow immediately. We're going to try to do it all in one move, like a super proof. So proof. Let me use a, a different color. How about, uh, about this one? So note, e to the z1 is equal to e to the z2 if and only if. Well, we can simply divide by e to the z2. So we end up with e to the z1 over e to the z2 is equal to 1, if and only if. And this is the same as saying that e to the z1 minus z2 is equal to 1, if and only if. And now applying our lemma, our result, on z1 minus z2, this is true if and only if z1 minus z2 is equal to, well, this is our z1 minus z2, 2k pi i k and z, and then we can simply add z2, and we are done, right? z2 plus 2k pi i, k in z. So we have proven our result. Not a hard proof, but if you actually go through all the details like we did, it does take a while to go through it and, and explain it. So hopefully it made some sense. That's it.